the madman. Welcome to another card review. Uh, this one is with the big Friday stream dump, as well as a few other cards. Starting with Druid, we've got Spreading Plague. 5 mana, summon a 1-5 Scarab with Taunt. If your opponent has more minions, cast this again. Uh, there are going to be more cards with this mechanic, so keep an eye out for that. That's super value to be able to cast a spell more than once. And obviously, if you cast a spell for exactly one time, you're probably doing it wrong. How good is this card? Well, let's compare it to Spike Ridge Steed. Uh, Spike Ridge Steed is 6 mana for 2 2 sixes. This card costs 1 less mana. And if you cast it on two minions, you're getting two one fives at a loss of only four stats. And you can make up those four stats if you cast a third spreading flick. 18 stats for five mana is incredible. Uh, now, to be fair, the stats aren't that good, but they're also not bad. They're arguably pretty good because uh, five health on multiple minions is kind of hard to break through perfectly. Uh, this is a really good card against aggro. The other card to compare it with is Protect the King, uh, which is 3 mana for 1 1s with taunt, so for an extra 2 mana each time, you're getting 4 extra health on all of your taunts. As someone who actually played that deck, Protect the King and Bolster, Spreading Plague looks very, very promising. I'm glad that Spike Ridge Steed came in a previous expansion, because now I'm more able to accurately look at this card and actually say that I think it's absolutely insane. I've got a Hunter Venom Strike Trap. I actually thought this card was much better than it ended up being. Uh, when I read it, it says, When one of your minions is attacked, summon a 2-3 Poisonous Cobra. Uh, completing the cycle of Jungle Panthers getting summoned, and Iron for Grizzly getting summoned. Uh, and now you get that Cobra. Now unfortunately, it doesn't mean that the Poisonous Cobra like goes into block. It just means you get the Cobra. I originally thought that the Cobra, like, was like noble sacrifice and it's like get down i'm a cobra hiss spite but what it is is it's basically a two mana cobra i'm not entirely sure how much a one one improvement on gastropod which only happens when your minions are attacked is but there's some synergy out there uh between the huntress uh, so this could be a zero mana poisonous cobra basically and also with professor putricide uh, you can get another secret with the Venom Strike Trap, or a Venom Strike Trap can get spawned. You'd be pretty happy with that one, I think. Doomed Apprentice, 3 mana, 3-2. Three, so that text better be really good. Uh, your opponent's spells cost one more. Turns out that text isn't really good. Much like the Nerubian Unraveler, making the spells cost more seems to be taking too much value out of the stats. I don't think Nerubian Unraveler is going to get played. And this is a class card, which is somehow still not better. You can't play a 3-mana three 3-2, three I think. And also, it's not even a battle cry, so if your opponent has a uh, minion left over, they can just kill the Doomed Apprentice and still do their plan anyways. I mean, I imagine they tested this card at 2 and found that it was too powerful or prohibitive in some way, because it would be obvious to cast this at 2. On 3, though, boy is that expensive. Worth mentioning for those that didn't watch the reveal screen, at the very least, I think that her voiceover come into play is very cool. As you might know from the Sorcerer's Apprentice, uh, she says, Someday, I want to be just like you! Uh, in reference to Jaina. Doomed Apprentice will be saying, Someday, you're gonna be just like me. In reference to how you will soon be dead, and also be the undead that the Doomed Apprentice is. And now... The Mage Death Knight, Frost Lich Jaina. When Jaina comes into play, you're getting the 5 armor, typical of the Death Knight hero cards. Uh, you're going to change your hero power into very useful Icy Touch. And you get a Battle Cry, summon a 3-6 Water Elemental, and your Elementals have Life Steal this game. Permanently, every single one. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be in a Elemental deck necessarily, because her hero power Summons Water Elementals, uh, very Jaraxi, uh, where you deal one damage and then if you kill a minion with that ability, you summon a Water Elemental. Your goal is of course to be summoning Water Elemental each turn. Not always going to happen, but maybe you can make it happen often. So pros and cons versus Jaraxxus. Pros, anywhere where you are at 10 health or more, you're going to end up at more health than Jaraxxus. 
And then you stabilize better than Jaraxxus because your water elementals will have lifesteal and you even come into play with a water elemental already. This card, unlike Syndragosa, uh, might actually be a decent finisher. And it's even seen that it could combine with Syndragosa. Kill off your own frozen heroes, you get a legendary, you get a water elemental. That could be a thing. Also, if you already have a board of elementals when you play Jaina, then you're going to get healed anyways. So, the ultimate stabilize card, the ultimate control card, very similar to Draxus, Mage gets a Draxus ish card now. The 3 6 water elementals, not only are they healing you, they're also freezing minions, so, seems like a promising finisher. We'll see whether or not control mages are able to afford the 9 mana to uh, end the tempo loss the turn you play Frost Lich Jaina for the super big value you get. The rogue weapon that rogues have been waiting for this whole time? Basically three mana fire war axe, which uh, your hero is immune the turn you play it. So when you play it, you're presumably going to play it on a turn that you hit something with it, and then you gain the health with it. Given that paladins are running Rallying Blade, which is a three mana three two, uh, for not much reason other than actually just running a 3-mana three 3-2 three weapon. Uh, Shadow Blade looks pretty reasonable. Shadow Blade looks pretty good. If the opponent had a Death Rattle card that dealt damage to you when it died, such as Leper Gnome, as they said in the example, then you don't take that damage either. You can play the Shadow Blade, play the Cold Light Oracle, you draw a bunch of cards, you don't take any fatigue damage. So it works dual purpose. You don't have to play a weird card like Violet Illusionist. You can play a card that you would actually want in your mill deck also. I don't personally think that mill will be a thing, but just worth mentioning the application. Howling Commander, 3-man 2-2. Two, two. Battlecry, draw the Vine Shield minion from your deck. People have been wording this as basically draw Tyrion or draw Wicker Flame Burn Bristle, which at present time it seems to be the case. The main problem with this card is it competes with Stonehill Defender. Uh, which also basically draws you Tyrion, uh, except out of the game, so Tyrion is still in your deck, which tends to be a good thing. So the big question is, do you run this alongside Stonehill Defender? I don't think you're cutting Stonehill Defender for it, because 1-4 Taunt is better stat line than a 2-2. Is it better than Stonehill Defender because you actually get to actively draw the card you're looking for, Tyrion, or Wicker Flame, uh, or do you take your chances with Stonehill? At this point, I've played with Stonehill enough that I'm willing to take my chances with Stonehill. Uh, you can even get the new Bolvar with this card now, uh, which is worth mentioning because I actually think Bolvar is pretty good. Um, also, we still haven't seen the rest of the set. Perhaps these cards belong in different decks. You can put the Howling Commander in your Divine Shield deck. Uh, not entirely sure how the Divine Shield deck will look. Traditionally, it's looked to be a very aggressive deck, and so you're not really looking for a 3-mana 2-2 draw card. It reminds me a lot of Cabal Courier. Here, instead of just discovering a card, you're drawing a card that you've actually put in your deck, which is presumably pretty good. So, compared to that card, it actually compares pretty favorably. Howling Commander certainly has the chance to see play as well. Uh, we're gonna have to see how the rest of the set comes together, how good the Vine Shield minions are. Breeze gets Eternal Servitude. Uh, for 4 man, discover a friendly minion that died this game and summon it, which is pretty good. Finally, there's a way to fetch your graveyard cards. It's been hinted that there's apparently a really good priest card that you want to resurrect uh, in this set, which hasn't been revealed yet, so until we see that card, we can't really admire the full value of Eternal Servitude. But uh, even right now, we can see that it's already potentially really good. So this looks like it would be a card that would fit into a control deck, uh, where you play your big cards, big priest, easy priest, and then for 4 mana, you're summoning a card that normally should cost 6 or 7 or 8 mana. Or 9 mana. Or 10 mana. Big card that you summoned with Barnes, and pull it with Eternal Servitude. If your Injured Blade Master dies, and you Eternal Servitude, you just paid 4 mana for a 3-7. You just paid 4 mana for a 4-7. That's pretty good. This can even see play in a combo deck. It would normally be prohibitive to play Prophet Valen or Malagos and then cast spells. Uh, I mean, you just don't have enough mana. But suppose you get a 5 mana discount on Malagos, or a 3 mana discount on Prophet Valen, uh, thanks to Eternal Servitude, if you run only exactly that card. You play your Prophet Valen, you play your Malagos, of course your opponent's gonna kill it. 
Uh, now you can Eternal Servitude, and then pull off some pretty crazy combos. You have your Prophet Valen die, you have your Malagos die. Uh, you play two Eternal Servitudes, and then you Man Blast your opponent. Uh, you choose Malagos once, you choose Prophet Valen once. Bam! You're uh, Mind Blasting them for 20 damage. You play your two Radiant Elementals, and then you Mind Blast, Mind Blast, bam, that's 40 damage. And all it takes is Eternal Servitude, Eternal Servitude, Prophet Valen, Malagos, Radiant Elemental, Radiant Elemental, Mind Blast, Mind Blast. So it's just an 8 card combo, uh, which you have to set up over the series of approximately 3 turns. Cryostasis! It's a card that many people laugh at and say it's 100 dust. Well, maybe it is. 2 mana, give a minion plus 3 plus 3 and freeze it. A uh, really interesting card, in the sense that you can cast it on your own minions for the plus 3 plus 3, and cast it on your opponents in order to freeze and give them plus 3 plus 3 rather unfortunately. Uh, it's not really that clear on why this card is great for the plus 3 plus 3 and freeze, but here's why. Uh, 2 mana to give a minion plus 3 plus 3 is really good. The only other card that does that right now is Rampage, and that requires the precondition that the minion already be uh, damaged. If you Cryostasis your Taunt minion, like your Tar Creeper, you're not even really getting too big a drawback by freezing it. Uh, it also is reminiscent of Demon Fuse, uh, but it's a smaller drawback than Demon Fuse. You're only freezing a minion for turn rather than giving your opponent a Mana Crystal. It's one of those cards that currently looks like it is way too conditional to be used, but if we get enough cards, such as Murabi, uh, also released in the set, with more frozen synergies, then maybe this entire thing will work. Will it work? Well, we're gonna see whether or not there will be more uh, of these frozen synergetic cards released in the set. It certainly looks like they're pushing that archetype as something, so, you know, don't dismiss it too quickly. It could happen. Currently, it looks like it's not going to happen, but just keep an open mind. Sanguine Reveler. It's the new addition to Zoo, it seems. Seems like you want to use this to kill off your eggs. Uh, this is also a set with a lot of death rattles. We haven't seen all the cards yet, but given the right death rattle, uh, such as Possessed Villager, Sanguine Reveler could get a lot of value. I imagine if you're not getting the massive value off of killing certain death rattle cards, such as eggs, uh, you'd want to hit a 1-1, one, one, which means that the Sanguine Reveler is the equivalent of 1 mana 2-2, two, two, since you're subtracting a 1-1 one, one from your side and you're adding 2-2 two, two onto the stats. I don't recommend playing this on Ticking Abomination. I've got the new card, Snow Flipper Penguin, uh, basically a wisp with a beast, if you wanted to go for a really power opening, you could do something along the lines of Snow Flipper Penguin, Snow Flipper Penguin, uh, Sanguine Reveler, Coin Sanguine Reveler, bam, you've got two three threes on turn one. Wait a second, but you'd always just have played two Flame Imps then. Anyways, the more realistic usage for Snow Flipper Penguin if there is a usage, is you'll use it in some kind of beast synergy deck, where you use it as a cheap beast synergy. You know when you had that Houndmaster in your hand on turn 4, and you didn't have any beasts to play? Well, now you can just go ahead and play a Snowflipper Penguin and the Houndmaster. And the addition of a 0 mana beast does mean that your Zombeast, build a Zombeast uh, Deathstalk or Rexar hero power, uh, will have options for a lower mana cost, while still getting a plus one, plus one. I'll even throw out the Stampede out there. Uh, stampede in this card basically means you get a 1-1 one, one for free. It's kind of the same idea on why Gadisane Auctioneer is so dangerous with zero mana cards. Zero mana beasts are dangerous with Stampede, right? You could in theory Stampede and then like, fill your board up with penguins. Defile! Now this card's really exciting for Warlock. It's a Skill testing, two mana AOE, uh, clear the board, potentially. So even on the baseline, it's just a two mana whirlwind, which, yeah, that's pretty bad. 
But if you have any of them die, then that means Demon Wrath is back. Uh, because it would be 2 mana, deal 2 damage to everything. Even better, uh, Defile counters certain things like Possessed Villager because uh, their death rattle will go off. You cast Defile again and it kills both sides of Possessed Villager. So you want to set up a domino effect where you set something up at 1 health, 2 health, 3 health, 4 health, and 5 health. And since Defile is so cheap, you can use like your other minions or your other spells to set that up. And then you Defile and you wipe their board. Potentially dealing 15 damage if your opponent has a 5 health, 4 health, 3 health, 2 health, and a 1 health minion on the board. In fact, this card is so good with Dreadsteed that poor Dreadsteed had to take a fall. Uh, Dreadsteed is getting nerfed to read at the end of the turn. Uh, if Dreadsteed was killed, summon Dreadsteed. So expect to see a lot of interesting puzzles to defile. It even has interesting puzzles with spell damage because your initial defiles will deal extra damage with the spell damage, but eventually your spell damage minion might die, which will lower the damage that the file does. Could be interesting. Animated Berserker, one mana card for warrior and a 1-3. The 1-3 stat line is pretty good already, so the, so the text didn't have to be that good. Uh, after you play a minion, deal one damage to it, so this is an enabler for all of your enrage cards, for all your cards that actually want to take damage. Uh, the current ones out there that immediately come to mind are Acolyte of Pain, and there's also Frothing Berserker, Bloodhoof Brave, and all that jazz. Seems like we're going to want to see more cards with synergy with this, though, before we see the plays for it. It seems like it's in it for a Tempo and Rage deck, which actually used to be a thing uh, when just the vanilla set was around. So I could see something like turn when I made a Berserker, turn to Amani Berserker, you get a 5-2. Turn 3, Frothing Berserker. Turn 4, Blood Hoof. Brave? Uh, so we'll see whether there are more cards out there that enjoy dealing the damage. And hey, even if it doesn't happen right away, in the future it could be an enabler. You deal enough damage to all your stuff in your tempo deck, you battle rage and draw a bunch of stuff. It could happen. Dead Man's Hand. Another contender for possibly most overhyped card in the set. So for two mana, you shuffle a copy of your hand into your deck. Uh, this does technically enable another archetype, uh, Fatigue Warrior, because if you have two Dead Man's Hands in your hand, you can cast Dead Man's Hand, and then you shuffle your hand, including the other Dead Man's Hand, into your deck, and then you can go infinite off of it. So just like Jade Idol, you'll never run enough cards. Uh, unfortunately, when you get down to Earth, kind of similar to Gang Up, it's two mana have no effect on the board presence or your hand. It's like a super long term thing. Will you be able to actually live the dream of dead man's handing your dead man's hand and going infinite off of that? It's a matter of seeing whether or not this archetype, which will probably be control, will be able to like blast all 30 cards and then out fatigue the opponent basically. Why are you doing that instead of changing your hero power to Ragnaros's power, which will eventually kill your opponent also? while also being the deal with the board. <laughs> Kalento with the word dust. Kalento has spoken. Anyways, not to poo-poo on this card too much, because theoretically with Dead Man's Hand, all possibilities are possible. If you have your 50 turn Hearthstone game, Dead Man's Hand is pretty good. And finally, last and least, Prince Valinar. Uh, 4 mana, 4-4, four, four, Battlecry, if your deck has no 4 cost cards, gain life, steal, and taunt. The first thing to say is that there are actually decks out there which don't use 4 cost cards. The most uh, prominent one right now is Token Druid. Right now, they sometimes run a swipe. You don't have to run the swipe. So you can run a 4-4, four, 4 mana, four, 4-4 four, four, four with life, steal, and taunt in it. Uh, the main problem is this, this card probably wants to see play in a control deck. This card kind of reminds me of Tidal Surge, which is also 4 mana, and it deals 4 damage to gain you 4 health. Seems like, to me, that's about what Valinar can expect to do. Uh, probably the most controlling deck that immediately comes to mind as not having very many 4 drops is the Miracle Rogue. Uh, that deck only runs Sherazin, sometimes, and you don't have to run Sherazin. Instead, you can run Prince Valinar. In theory, that's like the perfect match for the deck. One, it's not that much of 
compromising your deck in order to put Prince Velinar in. So basically, you're just getting your 4 mana 4 4 lifesteal taunt. So is that good enough in that deck? If you don't even have to compromise your deck, that remains to be seen. I mean, clearly lifesteal is a stat that we don't really have much experience with. Like, I can see how, in theory, this card's good, because a 4 mana 4-4 four, four lifesteal and taunt is costed aggressively. It's just... blah, in terms of the stats. It's pretty incredible that even in a deck such as Miracle Rogue, which loves healing and has the 4-drop for it, it's not immediately obvious whether or not the card is good for it. Why not make Prince Valinar 5-5? Five, five? You'd ruin the mirror. I'm, I'm sure they have this discussion. It's like, huh, you know, I think Prince Valinar looks pretty bad. No, we can't change the stats though. Why not? Well, the Prince Cycle, you see, we have a very clever design. We made a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, a 3 mana 3-3, three, three, and a 4 mana 4-4. Four, four. Oh, that makes complete sense. We should print it as is. Uh, another day in Blizzard development. Okay, and as is tradition in all the previous card reviews, if I have a card upcoming to show, uh, I'll give you guys a pretty big hint here. I think that card would go really well with one of the cards that I just reviewed. Uh, thanks for watching and good night.